Even if you are not ready for the day, it cannot always be night. If you did not hear this phrase in Kanye's song titled Praise God, you probably wouldn't miss it on social media. With over 1.5 million videos and TikTok challenges, and 1,000 plus hashtags on Instagram, this phrase has been on the top of trends. It originates from the piece titled Speech to the Young, written by Gwendolyn Brooks. To many, this may just be a phrase, another trend, another quote, but to me, I have thought of it over and over and over again. The meaning to me is simple. The phrase, those shots, means to me that even if you are not ready, even if you're not looking forward to it, even if you are not prepared, tomorrow always comes. The next thought, the next fear, the next career decision, and there you will be waiting to make a move. What has been that decision in your life, or what would that decision be? For me, that decision has been my career. It is my silhouette. Growing up, I was called doctor by my dad because I loved integrated science, and I excelled at it. My twin sister loved mathematics. She excelled at it too, and she was called accountant. So I thought to myself, maybe I'll study hard in school, get all the grades, and go on to enter medical school and fulfill my dreams of becoming a doctor. Getting into medical school that year was a struggle. Two-year groups were finishing high school in Ghana, so I sat in the same class with my seniors and wrote our final exams together. So thinking about it, I was asking myself already, would I make it? Would I already enter medical school? Would I become a doctor? And my fears probably came to pass. I couldn't get into medical school, even though I passed a distinction from high school. And even more, I couldn't even get into pharmacy, my second choice program. Then I was given my third choice, computer science, to study. The first semester in the first year was a struggle. I mean, I was seeing all the zeros and ones and wondering where exactly are we headed with all of these? What do we want to achieve? What are we doing in this class? So I thought to myself, maybe it's time to move to something simpler, something that I can understand just at one glance. So in thinking about the move and wanting to move, I thought I would go to biological science. My dad calls me and says, he's just been reading about the female graduate student who also did computer science, and she's teaching girls in slum areas in Ghana how to code. So I thought to myself, maybe this is a good chance to tap into somebody's story. I reach out to her online, and I say, please mentor me. I don't know what's happening in my class. Then she says, OK. Thankfully, I mean, I was so excited. Um, you, you know how to reach out to people, and then there's a long list of others waiting for them, and you're wondering, will she even respond to me? She responded to me. I added her to a WhatsApp group, and I put other ladies in my class who were struggling like I was on the page. Every day after class, we had a sort of debriefing session. We go on to share about what was our struggle, then she gives us pointers. The mentoring I had those days as an undergraduate has moved from there until now I still get the mentoring. Now, think about research that shows a sore underrepresentation of females in technology-related fields. And one of the reasons for the lack of entry into such roles has been stated to be the absence of models, role models, or mentors in the space, which makes the idea of entering into the space seem like a non-viable one for many. Now, in scenarios where people are able to find mentors, there is a tendency to want to imitate exactly who the mentor is. And when they can't be exactly the person they're looking at, then they vet themselves as not being capable in the drop-off. Everyone's journey is unique. Everyone's journey is different. So my struggle to find answers in my career didn't end there. And then uh, in my search for information and to be able to build the knowledge I had in my career, I did many things. As a multi-potential light, I did a lot of things. I danced. I thought probably if this wasn't working, I mean, I love to sing. I love to dance. It could work. My twin sister and I have been dancing since we were young. Probably we can make some money right? But I thought and looked for answers. So in one of my quests to find answers to 
my knowledge in fitting in well in a career that matches my passion, I chanced on a leadership fellowship. And I thought, maybe this is it. I can just apply, and I'm in school, and almost graduated, and I can, make some, I can take some knowledge out of this training. So I signed up, and I got an email that said I should prepare for a phone interview that would round up the rigorous round of application. For some of you, having an email that tells you to prepare for such a call, you would probably set an alarm, get ready, and all those. I did the same, but the worst happened. Maybe not the worst, but I missed the call. I returned the call. I called several times. There was no response. Then after many hours, this caller, who probably had a long list of people to call, returned my call. I was so excited. I forgot to eat lunch that day, but I wasn't bothered at all. I was just looking forward to that call. We had the call, and his final words were, if you are not able to complete this fellowship, you will not be eligible for any other US-funded program. So I would advise you to assess your availability to finally accept to be a part of it. In two seconds, I'd already assessed it, and I thought I was ready. That has been one of the quickest, yes, one of the very best decisions I have made in my life. The lessons from that leadership fellowship is what today I share to you in an actionable framework for you to find who you are in a field that you want to be in and to go on to pursue it. I call it TICS, T-I-C-S. We'll get to know about what each of the letters mean in the acronym. But think about where I came from. I reached out for a mentor to be able to support me on my journey and to fill that knowledge gap that I had in finding a path in my dream career. Then I found a community of people who were struggling like I was, and then I thought it was time to put it all together, to take action, to walk the talk, to make me move from where I was currently to where I thought I wanted to go and to see if that was really what I wanted to be. Now, think about the technical skills, which is the first in the acronym I coined, which is TICS. T is the technical skills, and is the first step that gets you into the door. After undergraduate studies, I was excited to start a career. Around this time, I was already doing the leadership training, and I found it already interesting. But still, I was in computer science, and having struggled, I was thinking, okay, how would I go about it? How would I start off exactly? In Ghana, we have the opportunity to undergo a one-year mandatory national service if you attend a public university. And I was placed in one of the finest companies in Ghana, and I was excited to go work there. I took my letter of placement to the company, and I saw other enthusiastic young people willing also to start their careers and also excited about it. Many of us that day were sent home with rejection letters, and I was a part of it. The company had filled up their open roles and they asked us to go for replacement. And around the time, it was already getting late. So with a broken voice and a letter of rejection in my hand, I saw the company's chief technical officer pass by. This was the person who had facilitated our field trips as undergraduates to the company. And in there, I was vocal and I was asking questions. Because I didn't understand what was ongoing. Why do we have zeros and ones still? Why do we have all these black screens? I asked so much questions. So with a letter in my hand and, I see, and me seeing him pass, I asked the receptionist, can I please speak to the CTO? She asked one very fast question. Do you have an appointment? I shake my head. She reaches for her phone, places a call, and the next thing I see her hand me a visitor's tag. I went to see the CTO. I presented my case, but I had only one request. Can I please be interviewed? He says, I think we just had an interview because you're looking for somebody with network troubleshooting skills and remote support skills, and you have that. So he called the HR to give me a letter of admission into his team of eight people, and I was joining as the only female, as a network operations officer. I stayed in the company for three years, and I moved from the office of the network operations, and I moved to be a system tester on three e-health systems, one of which is currently used to trace COVID cases in Ghana. And I stayed also to work as a part of the IT project department in a company in Ghana. Now think about it. If my skills were not adding anything to the team, would I have stayed that long? Would they have wanted me to be a part of it? 
If people weren't giving good reports about me, would, would teams want to have me on their team? And that is where the interpersonal skills comes in. According to Steve Jobs, technology alone is not enough. Let me personalize this for our situation. Your skills alone are not enough. After exiting Apple in 1986, Steve Jobs bought a company, a small computer manufacturer company, called Pixar. And what he did in 2000 was to relocate the company into an abandoned factory, Del Monte. What he thought to do was to move everybody into a space so that different people could collaborate and different cultures could also meet and learn from each other. Maybe it was about the space, but to him, he found a problem that he wanted to solve. He thought that when people bump into each other, when they make eye contact, that is where the magic happens. Think about this situation where this atmosphere has been created for collaboration to thrive. The onus now likes on you and an employee to make the most out of this and to collaborate with each other. If people are not able to communicate with you, they don't find you approachable, they don't find you an, an, an easy person to work with, it may be hard to vouch for you to do other things in the company. And in your career, you want to be able to build a network that would advance you to the next step. That is where the inter interpersonal skills comes in. Now think about the conceptual part. A name comes to your mind when we mention a certain industry. For example, technology, or maybe health, or maybe music, or maybe art. What is that name? Your conceptual skills is your ability to think on your feet because you have gained experience over time working practically in a certain field that you are in and are able to command control over things that are happening. Now think about times where people ask you questions about things that you already know and the excitement with which you present to them. And I'll present to you Ngozi Okonjo Ewela. She is a fine blend of conceptual skills and strategy skills. She is the current Director General of the World Trade, World Trade Organization and the very first African and also woman to lead the organization. She is thought to be a transformational leader and what that means is that she sets very high goals for her team and is able to make people learn from others, especially high achievers, by setting them up as examples. So they're able to see what people are doing and be motivated to also want to put in some work. Your conceptual skills where you are able to understand things and to be able to solve problems on your feet. And your strategic skills, which you've built over the years, rising through different ranks, would give you the opportunity to be able to predict what is, what ought to be, or what can be. With that in mind, you're projecting or moving forward in your career. What is in your toolkit? You have the power to create your journey with, with values that resonate with you. You have the power to be your authentic self. You've been given this outline as a silhouette to fill in. Maybe you are in that part of your career where you're handing it down to others. What are you handing down? Remember, leadership is one part you can start from, and it doesn't start with anybody, it starts with yourself. To be able to understand who you are, especially in the very fast evolving world of technology, to understand what your values are, and to be able to communicate clearly what they are so people can also buy into your journey and help you succeed. Just like a silhouette, your career may not be a clear scene of the picture. So be very, very bullish on your vision and flexible on your execution. You have the power to do that in that actionable framework of technical skills, interpersonal skills, conceptual skills, and strategic skills. Thank you.